I'll tell you a little bit about the overall program. Um, we call it the Biodiversity Informatics Training Curriculum. And essentially the thinking behind this whole project is that biodiversity informatics is a new field, okay? Now there have been people doing parts of this field for a long, long time. Back to Linnaeus, perhaps. But doing this as a formal field within the realm of informatics is actually rather new. Um, as, a, as a consequence of that, there are really no established comprehensive programs. For the time being, there's no place, for example, to go and do a PhD in biodiversity informatics. Now that may change very soon uh, right here in, in southern Africa with a program being developed at University of Western Cape. Um, but really, it's not like, um, what, insect systematics where you might go to Cornell University, okay? It's not like most universities where you could get a degree in statistics. This is a field that really doesn't have that established program. Still worse is there aren't many training resources. There aren't textbooks, for example, okay? There aren't references or established protocols in large part, obviously exceptions, but really there aren't, there aren't these, these established ways of doing business. And at the same time, this is a field that's growing massively, okay? The investment, you can see it here at Sanvi, you can see it in countries around the world and you can see it in international efforts. Very basically, there's, there's a lot of interest and a lot of investment in this field and yet we're without these established protocols, uh, best practices, wisdom of experience. So that's essentially what goes behind this program. The other thing that goes behind this program is my own interests. Um, this program is, is eating up a, an immense amount of, of my personal time for the past and next several years. Um, but my interests are, are global. Essentially, that's where my students have come from. Um, I've been involved in teaching short courses kind of around the world for, for a number of years. Um, and so I've, I've got this interest, but I was always very frustrated with the model. Essentially, the model was five, ten years ago, get some experts together and get some smart people who want to learn the techniques that the experts have, get them together, get them all together in a room and sit for a week and work together. What are the problems? The problems are that it's only 5, 10, 15, 20 trainees, participants. And the other problem is that um, your experts only have certain ability to, to go to a place. And so you really have very limited diffusion. And so that was very frustrating to me. Um, so over the past five, 10 years with a couple of colleagues, um, we've been exploring how we can essentially use technology to, to solve some of those problems. Um, In-person interaction, training, learning, teaching is always best. But uh, we have some very simple technologies at our disposal now that can change this picture a bit. And so one of the very simplest is YouTube, which is to say we have a quite efficient means of sharing digital video worldwide, essentially every internet cafe in the world um, gets you some degree of access to YouTube. Um, and it's a very effective way of communicating at least the lecture part, if not the practical part of, of training courses. Um, we've explored another interesting solution, which is um, language. 
Essentially, my language capacities are rather poorly adapted for Africa. I speak English pretty much okay. I speak Spanish fluently and Portuguese more or less fluently, um, and a little bit of Malay. So it doesn't do me much good in French-speaking Africa. Um, so in the, in the sense of a partial solution, what we've begun doing is transcribing all of the videos. And then there's a platform on the web called .sub that essentially allows crowdsourcing of subtitling. So there's a group of people in Egypt where when we put out a, a video subtitled in English, they translate it into Arabic. And we've done tests where we can take an hour-long lecture, put out the English transcription, and within a week, it's, tra it's translated into French, Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, and Chinese. So these are some really interesting technological boosts. This provides a lot of content. It makes it available globally. Um, in theory, it's at relatively low expense for the benefit. Um, I'll repeat what I had said on the previous slide, which is, in my view, there's really no, no substitute for in-person work. And I would say, I would go one step farther that there's no substitute for uh, full doctoral study. So that's re my real goal, but this is a way of, of getting people around the world in contact with the experts and doing that on a rather broad scale. So it, it doesn't get everything done, but it gets several steps taken. In-person training courses, digital video of everything, gets published to YouTube, it gets transcribed to English subtitles, translated, and then we provide ancillary information. So for example, the literature that we circulated to you all by email, links to that literature will be provided within the, the YouTube metadata. So in theory, the idea is that people around the world have access to the same content that we will have here. The funding for this comes from the JRS Biodiversity Foundation. Um, they have as their mission to support uh, research and activity in biodiversity informatics. I submitted a proposal to JRS in January 2012. It was funded in June 2012 when I was actually staying at CRIA with, with Vanderlei's group. And it was terrible because I had been thinking that I was going to just do research while I was there. And all of a sudden, I had to switch gears and get this program in the works. Um, we're envisioning nine sets of courses on diverse topics. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, and one thing I'll emphasize is just this is absolutely bare bones funding. I, you know, it's generous funding from JRS, but for the amount of things that we're trying to do, it's bare bones. So I would have liked to bring in more people and more experts and more time, but the budget simply doesn't allow it. So we're, we're doing the, the very best with a, again, a, a generous grant, but we're trying to do a little too much. The topics we're hoping to cover in this several years are a bunch of introductory topics. Essentially, what is this field? Uh, how do we publish scientific papers? How do we write proposals? Things like that. Um, a major challenge is this idea of how do we capture biodiversity data that are not currently digital? Uh, how do we clean and then publish biodiversity data? Those were the subjects of a week of, of uh, interaction in Nairobi in February of this year. Uh, then we start into essentially how do we use these data? And one use to which these data has, have been put 
is um, attempting to model ecological niches of species. That also was a course that was done in Nairobi in February. Um, next week, we'll be talking about essentially a bunch of other analyses to which biodiversity data can be put. This course, as you know, is about building the institutions. Um, at some point, we're hoping to do a course on essentially optimal design and implementation of biodiversity in inventory efforts, um, developing biodiversity diagnostics at a regional or national scale, and implementing biodiversity conservation efforts. So you can see it's a, it's a huge spectrum of, um, of activity, and it essentially relies on the participation of a bunch of experts because this is a spectrum that's far too diverse for one or a few people to, to speak to uh, authoritatively. Um, so we're right here in this progression. And coming up, we're hoping to have courses in probably Ghana, uh, probably Cairo, um, in 2014. Those will be announced on as many venues as we can find, but the easiest way to, to uh, keep track of these, these announcements is via the Facebook group. Uh, I'll show you the link to that in a moment. Where is this really going? Um, eventually, I'd love to see it extend across organismal biology. Um, I'm going to challenge my colleagues at the University of Kansas this fall to say, how about if we take our entire graduate curriculum and make it digital and make it online so that the professors can focus on getting deeper rather than repeating the same lecture they've given for the past 10 years. Um, Love to see this curriculum replicated in, in French and then on the Latin American side, Portuguese and Spanish. Um, and what I'd really like to see is essentially a, a cooperative network of graduate programs that offer essentially avenues towards graduate degrees for the participants in this program who, who are of particular promise. So um, just to show you some resources, there is a journal called Biodiversity Informatics that uh, a couple of us have been running for nine years now. Um, we use it as essentially a forum for talking about key issues in biodiversity informatics. It's online. It's free. Uh, there's no publication charges. The editorial staff consists of me and two other professors, basically. Um, here's the Facebook page. Uh, it's essentially a group called Biodiversity Informatics. Um, don't think of me as a um, Facebook aficionado, but this has really, really worked well. Um, 810 members as of a couple weeks ago. It's now up to 850 members. And it's basically just a lot of people with a common interest. And so uh, it's a great way for communication on kind of an informal basis. And last of all, but certainly not least, and this is thanks to Kate, um, We've put together a web page that essentially presents the whole curriculum, so that whole start to finish from the introductory material through data capture to data cleaning to data publishing, data analysis, and on into things like this group with, with thinking about institution building. It's all here in a linear series. The link is biodiversity-informatics-training.org. Essentially, one by one, you see these links going live. Uh, this course will end, this pair of courses will end in early August. And my goal is to have it all online by the end of August. And then you'll see another set of 30, 40, 50 links blink on and become 
accessible. But I'm very, I'm very happy with this page because it essentially sets out the whole field and the resources that, that have become available for them. Uh, the YouTube channel, uh, where essentially you can see the videos popping up, but probably the curriculum page and the Facebook page are the fastest way into this. But there are a bunch of people who subscribe to the channel. And so as soon as we publish a video, they see it. Um, and in fact, you can see here, three of the videos we'll be seeing tomorrow with Jorge Soberon, who couldn't make it here in person. So that's just a very brief introduction to the overall program. Um, any questions or thoughts or reflections uh, at that level at this point? 